Uh, in this case, we've been trying to help out with the San Onofre disaster down here. Uh, we know that now, we know that uh, Southern California Edison actually conspired, it looks like, with uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to put in faulty steam generators that they knew in advance were faulty. Uh, they had planned to upgrade this reactor from the start. Uh, they were planning to uh, run it and, and produce more energy without ever getting permission to do so. Uh, they worked the system and they got their hands in the system at every level such that they were able to get by all the different types of hearings and so forth and, uh, and really evade. And at this point, what you got is unfortunately a type of groupthink that goes on. Both the NRC and um, Edison are involved in this sort of groupthink where everybody thinks the same way. Nobody is willing to, to say no to anything that happens. And as a result, you get a disaster like this because uh, no, everyone's saying, yeah, it's fine, it'll work, fine, without really checking on it. It, it is actually hard to make steam generators that work right when you're, when you're changing so many things that they change. They, they added tubes, they changed the configuration inside, all to make more steam so they could make more money without having to, to go through the process. We've got a whole bunch of people this, uh, today, this afternoon, that would like to just say a few words about their, their uh, concern about the safety of uh, the proposal, which is to restart this. They say at 70% is going to be safe. Um, and uh, these people are, are some elected officials and activists at, at different groups, both from San Diego County and from up here in the Orange County area. First, I'd like to introduce um, uh, Don Mosier, a Del Mar City Council member and uh, Scripps Institute scientist, and he's really had a, a, worked with the Del Mar City Council to come out with a resolution suggesting that uh, that they have a hearing. So, Don. Thank you very much. I'm Don Mosier, I'm a city council member in Del Mar, and we're one of seven coastal cities that adopted a resolution asking the NRC to have a full license amendment hearing before restarting Unit 2. This is a safety issue for over 8 million people in the 50 mile radius of San Onofre. Safety is the most important uh, topic for elected officials. Del Mar is only 32 miles downwind of San Onofre, so a disaster at San Onofre would impact our citizens as well as many others. It was gratified recently that the San Diego Union School District adopted a similar resolution opposing the restart without a hearing to protect the 135,000 school children in their district. And I would urge Orange County School District to do the same. We now know that these were flawed steam generators from the very start and that the NRC at Southern California Edison has not been honest with the public about the problems with these steam generators. We think it's essential to have a full evidentiary hearing where we can hear testimony on both sides of the issue. We're getting input from nuclear engineers who tell us these generators are unsafe at any power level and we need to find out what's right, the public needs to demand to know that these generators are safe before they're restarting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Don. We're just going to jump right into the next speaker. This is going to be uh, Mike Nichols, uh, Mayor of Solana Beach. Come on, Mike. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Mike Nichols and I'm the mayor in Solana Beach. Um, we're a small coastal community about 30 miles downwind from uh, San Onofre, so we're, we're just next door to Del Mar. I'm here to represent our citizens this afternoon and our entire city council who has unanimously been supportive of the recommendation that Senator Barbara Boxer has been introducing. And we, we are uh, very appreciative of her leadership on this issue. She's calling for a full comprehensive study of songs, including its engineering design, safety, operational issues, plant security, and emergency preparedness before any of the, the generators are restarted, and we support that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, admittedly, I'm not a scientist, and I don't know if many of you are, but I don't think you need to be a scientist to understand the, con the concerns and the, the, the dangers and everything that could go wrong uh, from an environmental perspective, from a small accident uh, that would affect our region's quality of life, and our economic vitality. So the importance to get it right 
is only you can only do that one time because once you have an accident there's no going back public safety as i mentioned is government's most important responsibility and the nrc is entrusted with that responsibility this evening we are counting on them tonight on behalf of the eight million residents in the region to order a thorough investigation and conduct a formal hearing into the issues at songs and not allow unit two to start at this time thank you to all the dedicated individuals and groups that have been tirelessly bringing this to the attention of everyone in the public thank you very much and look forward to uh, seeing you all tonight at the uh, meeting thank you thank you thank you mike that was uh, important to talk about the barber boxer and uh, senator uh, representative markley's uh, letter that they sent to the nrc and really pushing this forward at a high level to say look something has gone on here that's wrong Grassroots organizations both in San Diego and in Orange County are, have been intensively involved in this. That's why we're here today. I'd like to introduce next a member of uh, one of the groups that has been behind that and uh, strong up here in the Orange County, and that's uh, Gary Hedrick. Come on up, Gary. Hi. Thanks for everyone being here and uh, the honored speakers from the elected community. It's so important to have you here. You know, this is really hard for me to understand. When they first proposed, when Edison proposed that we're going to take a defective reactor and start it up, run it at 70% and see what happens, I would have thought the NRC would say, what are you thinking? Why would they even propose such a preposterous idea? And yet here we are in, entrenched in a long, drawn-out debate wondering why is this so hard to understand and on top of it with the recent revelations from evidence being apparent on thank goodness to boxer and markey we have evidence that nrc has documents that show those generators shouldn't have been started in the first place now why would we continue this discussion any further than this we want the documents you know that's what this is about no more hiding this stuff. We want the documents and we want the we want the data. And what are we messing around? The NRC is here to protect us, right? We want the documents and we want the data and we want the public to be aware of what's going on. We don't trust the NRC anymore. That's it. Thank you, Gary. You know, um, years ago, this may not have been any big deal. Just a small leak out of a, a nuclear reactor, no problem. But guess what? We now see that uh, these reactors can be extremely dangerous, including this d d incredibly large disaster in Fukushima. Uh, people over there are now having to live with radiation throughout their lives in a part of uh, Japan that will be eliminated from habitation probably for the rest of our lives or maybe even forever. Um, we're happy here tonight, uh, to this afternoon, to have a, a person from the Fukushima area to tell us about that. And her name is Kathy Iwani. Come on up, Kathy. Right, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. As an evacuee of Japan after raising my daughters and living there for 25 years, I cannot stress enough that the three nuclear reactors in Fukushima continue to melt down, releasing tons of radioactive runoff water each and every day into, into our Pacific Ocean for the last almost two years. Contrary to popular belief, this disaster is nowhere to being completed or over. While the Japanese government and TEPCO, the people responsible for the meltdowns, feign decontamination, it is fact that these reactors are still too hot to cap because in doing so, there would be explosions of unbelievable uh, scale. They are so highly contaminated, in fact, that human workers cannot go in to begin repairs. Robots cannot even withstand the high temperatures. They just cease to operate. Commissioner William Madwood of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, speaking about the Fukushima reactors recently, last year on October 12th in Washington, D.C., at a Senate Environment and Public Works Committee hearing in D.C., he said, and I quote, It is difficult to underestimate the challenge of removing radioactive material from the area. There will need to be new technologies to accomplish the cleanup. And some of these technologies don't exist, he said. 
I live 380 miles away from the Fukushima reactors in southwest Japan in a place called Wakayama. I lived with a Geiger counter measuring my food in the environment and also in the environment for a year before we made the decision to leave. I can attest to the fact that contamina contamination in no way stays within the evacuation zone of 20 kilometers. Okay. Presently, 26 out of 47 prefectures in Japan are found to have trace, trace uh, measurements of radioactive cesium in their municipal water supplies. Now we're in San Onofre. Risking restart of the defective reactor number two at San Onofre is essentially rendering our children laboratory guinea pigs in Edison's nuclear experiment. It's our responsibility to protect our most valuable resource, our children. They are our future. On behalf of my two daughters, on behalf of my two daughters who are half Japanese, I demand a transparent adjudicatory hearing with license amendment process including hearings with sworn testimony from both sides and cross-examination with experts outside of the NRC and outside of Southern Cal Edison. Edison, yeah. Edi Edison refuses to submit their propri proprietary information that they've been sitting on since October of last year. If they are confident of safe restart of the San Onofre reactor in April, what do they have to hide? We demand transparency and nothing less. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so, how dangerous is this for us? You know, we need to know how this is going to affect our lives. Should, it we, is, should we be concerned about it? I well, I think I can answer the question for you. The answer is yes, we should be concerned. But let me introduce you to someone that can probably shed some more light on that. We have Deanna Polk here, a registered nurse who knows all about this. Come on up. Hi, my name is Deanna Polk. I'm a registered nurse, but I also hold a Master's of Science in Homeland Security, and I'm all but a uh, thesis for a Master's of Science in Global Emergency Preparedness and Response. I worked within San Diego County for the last 15 years, helping to develop disaster drills, emergency preparedness plans. I helped form the first decontamination response team at Scripps La Jolla Hospital. And while San Diego County and Orange County has probably the best integrated disaster response in the country and the best responders, the most highly trained responders in the country, we still haven't been able to figure out how to decontaminate an ambulance, how to shelter in place a children's field trip to the San Diego Zoo, how do you shelter in place a surf contest at Trestles, how do you shelter in place a high school football game, our skilled nursing facilities, our teachers haven't been trained to shelter and place our children in school, it really can't be done. And I would like, you know, everyone to ask the commissioner some of these questions. If it happened right now, how do our police respond? How are they, you know, going to decontaminate their vehicles? San Onofre is also a known terrorist target. Yeah. We have this located on an active fault and the problem is, is we have too many hazards. You go through this process of assessing what your hazards are and trying to mitigate them, trying to, you know, prevent, you know, an impact. Well, seeing that we've only gotten about 11% of our energy out of that plant, and we have survived without it for a year now, I think the hazards are far outweigh the Thank you, Deanna. Uh, yeah, you know, if this thing has a disaster, uh, let's face it, we're, we're not going to be able to get around on these freeways. There really is no good evacuation plan. H how would you plan for something of that magnitude? It's just, you can't. But let's, let's hear somebody who's a professional about urban planning and see what he thinks about the planning on this. Uh, we have a gentleman here named Court. Corgan Johnson, professional urban planner and Solana Beach resident. Corgan, come on up.
My name is Torgan Johnson. My name is Torgan Johnson. I'm an urban planner. Hold two degrees from Harvard, graduate degrees from Harvard in planning. And uh, I want to first make a statement to uh, Mr. Theodore Craver, the CEO of Edison International. I'd like to say, Ted, this is not a poster child for nuclear disasters. Yeah. Right. This is my daughter. And she's the most precious thing in my life. What I saw when I watched the Fukushima disaster unfold was a radioactive plume travel so fast and so far. It traveled 5,500 miles in about six days and covered the entire Pacific Basin. Radioactive fallout was detected here in California at 181 times above safe levels at UC Berkeley's Nuclear Engineering Department. We got no word from our authorities that this was occurring. The EPA, the NRC, FEMA, nobody told us anything. We had to figure it out for ourselves, just like today. We're having to figure this out for ourselves, how to defend ourselves against a system that's broken. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We have a regulatory system here that does not consider, the NRC does not consider communities outside of the San Onofre power plant boundary as their jurisdiction. They leave that up to emergency responders. But what can an emergency responder do after an emergency, radioactive emergency starts to unfold in San Onofre? Absolutely nothing. I did a quick study of the impacts that a radioactive accident in San Onofre would inflict on surrounding communities. First by looking at the what it's called the EP zone, e EPZ, which is the emergency planning zone, extends 10 miles out from the power plant. There are three cities within that zone. There's San Juan Capistrano, Dana Point, and San Clemente. Just looking at the housing component, the value of the homes, that's your personal nest eggs. It's $47 billion worth of homes that could be lost in a matter of hours. And that sounds outrageous, but that's what we just saw happen in Fukushima, Japan. In other words, FEMA, the NRC, the Interjurisdictional Planning Committee will tell you that they've got an evacuation plan for you. But what they're not telling you is a little surprise at the end of the evacuation, which is that there may be no home to go home to. Yeah. And what I'd like to ask is that the NRC hold Edison accountable, first of all, to produce the documents that the public wants to see regarding the base data and all the documents related to the replacement of the steam generators at San Onofre. And secondly, to run those steam generator, the, the uh, replacement project through a fully adjudicate, adjudicatory hearing and through a license amendment process with independent experts and testimony under oath and to not even think about restarting reactor number two before that process takes place. Thank you. Thank you, Targan. You know, what we're up against here is, uh, in fact, uh, this is a, a type of uh, for-profit organization that is linked into the government. You don't really have a choice about where your power comes from. They had an idea that you could go out and buy, you know, get it from wherever you want. You can't do that anymore, otherwise everybody would say, not from a nuclear reactor, right? So we have to have these things here. As ratepayers, they take our money, then they spend it to promote their point of view. They spend it to, to bring in all of these workers that you see here on these buses. That's our ratepayer money bringing those people in. We had to pay for those people to come in here. That's money out of our pocket. These people are people that we pay to work. And they're coming in to fight for that point, one point of corporate point of view. Do we get any money from, from SEMPRA or Southern California Edison for our point of view? Not one penny. Not one penny. We put in all this volunteer stuff. Do these people, are they volunteers? They're no, they're paid to be here. They get a free lunch to be here. They're bussed in for free to be here. Right. This is a bogus bunch of shills 
that are not here on their own penny. They're here on, on the penny of Southern California Edison. We love the unions. We want the workers to work. But this is the wrong way to promote the corporate point of view. That's my opinion. Finally, I'd like to introduce somebody who's uh, really been a key activist, and that's Gene Stone. Coming up, Gene. All right, Gene. Yeah. Union Brothers, welcome. It's California Edison that is losing your jobs because of their poor design. And we want you to have jobs, new jobs, new union jobs in the renewable energy field. Green jobs, unsafe work conditions for union workers. Okay, now here's what I was really going to say. The NRC motto is protecting people and the environment. And this is going to be my statement to them tonight. This is a great motto. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that the NRC uh, has the same goal. Their goal seems to be to protect and serve the nuclear industry and to keep it going no matter what. NRC, NRC, your job is to protect the people and the environment and that is what we demand of you. Now we find that Senator Boxer and the NRC has been conducting a secret investigation uh, all the while while the new chairman of the NRC talks about transparency. The NRC has lost all authority over people. Any government and any agency, once they lose their moral authority by not being transparent and reactive to the people, have lost all moral authority to govern this issue. If they expect to gain any authority back at all, they need to meet these three conditions. Give the public an adjudicated public hearing under oath here in Orange County as soon as possible. Yes. Only this process will ensure transparency and the protection of the people and the environment. We demand that the NRC uh, put on hold any decision for restart until these conditions are met. A. NRC secret investigation is complete and made public. Yes. PUC completes the OII report. While both the NRC and the PUC agencies work independently of each other, and that is important, both agencies need to work on the same timeline for the good of the Californians, our economy, and our safety. We demand that a federal court, this is Rose, Rose demands that a federal court make a determination to see if there has been any criminal wrongdoing by the NRC. Also, Rose calls for on the government, Governor Brown to replace Michael Peavy as president of the PUC and to demand that the yeah. PUC move on in a timely fashion to complete the OI report. Finally, I would say to Mr. Uh, Ted Craver again, stop the nuclear madness and permanently shut down San Onofre and move California Edison's good union workers to the only energy future that California has, and that is renewable energy. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Those are good words. We do have to move on. It's a time to change, to the, get into our renewable energy world here. Well, I, with all these buses coming in, I, I'm going to want to close out this meeting here pretty fast. I do want to say that there's, as an engineer, uh, there's some goofy things about what they've told us so far, and one of them that I find very interesting and unusual, kind of like what Colombo would trigger off of, you know, one of those things that doesn't let you go to sleep at night, is the fact that the second steam generator that they made, that was number three, and they tightened up the tolerances so that it was made better, actually fell apart twice as fast. Wow. And so this doesn't make any sense. Either somebody is lying about those tolerances, or somebody didn't know what the tolerance should be and just pulled them out of the sky. Wow. Something is really wrong with that picture. So Colombo, if he was here, he'd be working in on that one. Wow. Um, so that's the question I'm going to ask today in a little bit more depth. Before we close, I'd like to, uh, to have a little bit of lighthearted uh, entertainment here. So Tom English, why don't you come up here and sing your song? This is really an excellent song. Go for it, buddy. <coughs> Can I have the microphone like here? Uh, just, can you just sing it to him? Yeah, I can. No, that's not it. Oh, that's it. No. Yes. All right, I'll just do that. Whatever. Here we go. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, 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 I was talking to somebody who wants to open uh, San Onofre. 
And I said, um, you know, what about Fukushima? And, uh, and he said, uh, well, you know, uh, we can talk about this if you want to be logical. But if you're not going to be logical, we can't have this conversation. And I was thinking, what part of Fukushima do you not understand when nuclear contamination hits the fan? Plutonium is everywhere, it's in the sea, it's in the air, and we don't even have any evacuation plan. What part of Fukushima do you not understand? What part of Fukushima did you somehow miss when sure is shooting every time with things like this? Destruction wages like a flame, officials play and spin the blame, and all of us are bracing, racing, facing the abyss. What part of Fukushima did you somehow miss? Humankind is humankind and we all make mistakes. Hard sometimes to not be blind and fall for fakes. But even now, before our eyes, it's in the sea, it's in the skies. You know we best prioritize air, water. Come on, guys. What part of Fukushima do you need clarified? What happens when the plate tectonics slip and slide? And then it blows. What happens then? It isn't if. You know it's when. And everybody petrified. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. What part of Fukushima do you not understand? Stand. What then can even FEMA do to lend a hand? The time to make the break is now, to wind and wave and solar power. If we're going to live, nuclear power must be banned. Rub your mind round Fukushima. It's no time to be a dreamer. It's no time to be a schemer. Go Fukushima, take a stand. Thank you, Tom. All right, they're not going to let us in the room until five. All right. So I just want to let you know, despite my words about not against the workers, but about how they're funded. Unions were not formed to fight against people like us. We support the union. The unions were formed so the workers could fight against their corporations. And they've got this thing turned around on its head here. So the corporations now are running the unions against the people. And that's the wrong way. That's when the unions have gone off course, in my view. So we're not against unions, so please do not uh, pick fights with the unions or react to them, uh, because they'll be trying to get us to do that. Um, yeah, we're all in this together. They're on our side, but they don't know it. Now, uh, please, when you go in, uh, we are going to be sometimes asking for you to, to give a cheer, perhaps, inside. And what would it be like? Three beats, like... No restart. Shut it down. 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 Okay, so you got that one good. Yeah, we have a handout inside. You're going to get more information, some ideas about what you can speak on. Uh, if you can, speak uh, from your heart what your point of view is on this. It's best to do it from yourself versus reading something else. But those are ideas. And uh, I want to thank all, this, all the volunteers, all the speakers that came forward, the elected officials, Don and Mike, thank you very much. And everyone here that's at the rally, thank you for coming. We'll see you later at the meeting. Thank you.